In today's video, I'll be talking about the permanent maxillary first molars. The permanent maxillary first molar is the sixth tooth from the midline in the maxillary arch. This is the maxillary right first molar and this is the maxillary left first molar. According to the universal numbering system, this is tooth number 3 and this is tooth number 14. Starting with the buccal cusp, it is trapezoidal in shape with the longer parallel side towards the occlusal surface. The buccal cusp is larger when compared with the premolars even though the occlusal cervical dimension is slightly less. Except for the distolingual cusp tip, the remaining cusp tips are visible from this aspect. The mesoocclusal angle is rounded while the distoocclusal angle is even more rounded. The cervical margin is slightly and unevenly curved towards the root apex. There may also be a sharp tip present on this margin just occlusal to the furcation area of the root. The occlusal margin is divided into two parts due to the presence of the buccal groove. The mesial part is composed of the mesobuccal cusp while the distal part is composed of the distobuccal cusp. The mesiobuccal cusp is wider while the distobuccal cusp is sharper. Both the cusps are of approximately equal height. The cusp tip of the mesolingual cusp is visible between them. The buccal groove occupies a shallow occlusal gingival concavity which may end in a buccal pit. The buccal ridges are the two convex areas on the buccal surface. In some specimens, a buccal gingival ridge is found. This is a convexity which extends mesiodistally in the cervical third. A shallow concavity may also be present which extends from the mesial surface towards the distal surface in the middle third. When present, it is located cervical to the buccal ridges and includes the termination area of the buccal groove. The buccal height of contour is located in the cervical third. Coming to the lingual aspect, it is trapezoidal in shape and convex occlusal cervically. The mesial margin is similar to the buccal aspect where the distal margin is shorter and the distoocclusal angle is more rounded. The cervical margin is slightly and unevenly curved towards the root apex. The distolingual groove divides the occlusal margin into two unequal parts, the mesial part and the distal part. The mesial part consists of the mesolingual cusp while the distal part consists of the distolingual cusp. The mesolingual cusp is larger and longer than the distolingual cusp. In fact, the mesolingual cusp is the largest cusp on this tooth. The distolingual groove may end in a lingual pit or just simply fade out. The lingual ridge of the mesolingual cusp is larger and bulkier than the lingual ridge of the distolingual cusp. The lingual height of contour is located in the middle third. A tubercle or a mini cusp is located on the lingual portion of the mesolingual cusp called the cusp of Caraboli. A groove separates this cusp from the mesolingual cusp and it is called the cusp of Caraboli groove. The prominence of this cusp varies from tooth to tooth. The mesial aspect is also trapezoidal in shape but it is wider at the cervical margin than at the occlusal margin. The buccal aspect is convex in the cervical third and then flat or slightly concave in the middle third. From the middle third to the cusp tip it is either straight or slightly convex. The lingual margin is convex, it may be irregular if the cusp of Caraboli is prominent. The cervical margin is slightly and irregularly curved towards the occlusal surface. On the occlusal surface, only the mesial cusps are visible and here we have the mesial marginal ridge. The contact area is round to somewhat ovoid in shape and it is located slightly towards the buccal at the junction of the occlusal and middle thirds. The distal aspect is rhomboidal in shape and the buccal, lingual and cervical margins are similar to the mesial aspect. On the occlusal margin, the cusp tips of the mesial cusps are visible. The distal marginal ridge is less prominent and more cervically located when compared with the mesial marginal ridge, as a result of which, more of the occlusal surface is visible from this aspect. There is usually a distal marginal groove present, but it is not as prominent here. The distal contact area is larger than the mesial contact area. It is located in the middle third, midway between the buccal and lingual margins. Coming to the occlusal aspect, it is rhomboidal in shape and wider buccolingually than it is mesiodistally. The buccal margin is divided into two portions due to this buccal groove. The mesial portion is longer than the distal portion. The lingual margin is also divided into two portions due to this distolingual groove. The mesial portion is longer than the distal portion. The occlusal table is bounded by the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge on the proximal surfaces and by the mesial and distal cusp ridges of the four major cusps on the buccal and lingual surfaces. Coming to the components of the occlusal table, first let's talk about the cusps. This is the mesiobuccal cusp, which is the second largest in size. It has four cusp ridges, buccal cusp ridge, lingual cusp ridge, mesial cusp ridge, and distal cusp ridge. It also has four inclined planes, mesiobuccal inclined plane, distobuccal inclined plane, mesiolingual inclined plane, and distolingual inclined plane. Only the lingual inclined planes are functional. This is the distobuccal cusp, which is the third largest in size. It also has four cusp ridges and four inclined planes, which are named similar to those of the mesiobuccal cusp. Here as well, only the lingual inclined planes are functional. 
This is the mesolingual cusp, which is the largest in size. The cusp bridges are similar to those of the other cusps except for the distal cusp bridge. The distal cusp bridge joins the lingual cusp bridge of the distobuccal cusp to form the oblique ridge. All four of the mesolingual cusps in climb planes are functional. This is the distolingual cusp, which is the smallest in size. It also has four cusp bridges and four inclined planes, which are similar to the other cusps, except for the buccal cusp bridge, which extends mesiobuccally, and the distal cusp bridge, which extends distobuccally. The cusp of Caraboli, which we have previously discussed, is on the lingual surface of the mesiolingual cusp. The prominence of the cusp varies from tooth to tooth. Coming to the ridges, the lingual cusp bridge of the mesiobuccal cusp and the buccal cusp bridge of the mesiolingual cusp join together to form the transverse ridge. The oblique ridge is formed by the distal cusp bridge of the mesiolingual cusp and the lingual cusp bridge of the distobuccal cusp. On the proximal surfaces, we have the mesial marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge. The mesial marginal ridge is longer and more prominent. There are four fossa present, the mesial triangular fossa, central fossa, distal fossa and distal triangular fossa. The central fossa is roughly triangular in shape and it is the largest and deepest one. It is bounded by the mesial cusp bridge of the distobuccal cusp, distal cusp bridge of the mesiobuccal cusp, the oblique ridge and the transverse ridge. The distal fossa is linear in shape and it is parallel and distal to the oblique ridge. It is bounded by the mesial and distal cusp bridges of the distolingual cusp and the oblique ridge. The mesial triangular fossa is bounded by the mesial marginal ridge, mesial cusp bridges of the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual cusps and the transverse ridge. The distal triangular fossa is bounded by the distal marginal ridge on the distal side and it is continuous with the distal fossa on the mesial side. Coming to the pits and grooves, this is the central pit which is the deepest portion of the central fossa. It is the junction of two primary grooves, the central groove and the buccal groove. This is the mesial pit which is the deepest portion of the mesial fossa. It is a junction of four primary grooves, the central groove, mesiobuccal triangular groove, mesiolingual triangular groove and mesial marginal groove. This is the distal pit which is the deepest portion of the distal fossa. It is a junction of five primary grooves, the central groove, distolingual groove, distobuccal triangular groove, distolingual triangular groove and distal marginal groove. The root trunk trifurcates into three well-developed root branches. The two buccal branches are called the mesiobuccal root and the distobuccal root, while the lingual branch is called the lingual root. The lingual root is the largest and the strongest one. It is wider mesiodistally than it is buccolingually. The mesiobuccal root is the second largest one. It is curved towards the distal surface in the apical third. It has a blunt apex and it is wider buccolingually than it is mesiodistally. The distobuccal root is the shortest and weakest one. It is curved towards the mesial surface in the apical third. It has a sharp apex and it is wider buccolingually than it is mesiodistally. In the midroot section, you can see that the outlines of the three branches are roughly ovoid in shape. Also, the lingual root is wider mesiodistally while the buccal branches are wider buccolingually. Coming to the variations and anomalies, the cusp of Caraboli varies in prominence. There is a sharp projection of enamel in the bifurcation area on the facial surface. This is found in 17% of maxillary molars and it may be a factor in periodontal disease in this area. Mulberry molar, which is the posterior counterpart of Hutchinson's incisor, is sometimes present. This is due to congenital syphilis and in this, the cusps of the mulberry molar are more centrally located and the occlusal enamel appears gnarled. The root also shows variations, partial fusion of the buccal roots and abnormal lengths and curvatures of roots are found. The root branches may also penetrate the maxillary sinus.